the brain biology of learning disabilities. Over the last couple of weeks I've been writing articles about a young man named Will who's been struggling with reading and specifically wrote about meeting his mom who was sharing her extreme frustration on her behalf and also on her son's behalf and trying to help him learn how to read. She knows he's bright, uh, she knows he has the ability, but she also knows that there are very real struggles that he's encountering and she's pretty much at her wit's end. Well, my objective in putting this video together is to actually share this information specifically with Will and help him understand what's going on in his brain because I think this information can give him a great sense of hope. Now, I've changed Will's name to protect his privacy, so uh, Will, when you get this video, I do know what your real name is, but again, I want to just respect your privacy. So here we go. First thing I'd like you to know is that reading is the most complicated task that we will ever learn as human beings, and it can be very overwhelming. You may feel alone in your struggle, but I promise you there are millions of students around the country who are struggling to learn how to read. Uh, my son in particular has a reading disability. He has dyslexia, and I've been doing a tremendous amount of research over the last two years to help him. As I've been uncovering things and sharing my experiences and many, many tears and frustration, I've been getting feedback from lots of people through our blog, through email, and calling in uh, to our office to tell us that they can relate. They're having similar challenges. So I promise you, Will, you are not alone. And actually, what I'm sharing in this video is a very simple explanation of some new things I've put together, and you're giving me a great excuse to share this with thousands of students. So I hope you feel good knowing that your story is likely going to help many other people as well. Now let me tell you briefly about my experience and my son's experience about struggling through school. There's a picture here of me in third grade sitting at my desk doing homework and while you can't exactly tell that I'm struggling I certainly don't look terribly happy and that's about the way I felt all through, uh, all through school. Kindergarten through twelfth grade I struggled. I only learned a few months ago at age 36 that I have ADHD and that's very likely why I had the struggles that I did. But I managed to learn study skills as I was entering college and that transformed my experience in college. Which is of course why I am doing what I do today as you can see from the bottom of the screen that I focus primarily now on helping students learn how to study. However, a couple of years ago my son Mark entered school. This picture was taken shortly after he started kindergarten and that's when we began to detect that there was a problem. I've spent the last two years scrambling to figure out how to help him and um, get the best resources for him. He's been diagnosed with ADHD and also with dyslexia. We didn't really pinpoint the dyslexia until about six months ago and as soon as we knew what we were dealing with then we were able to get some good instruction in place and I'm happy to report that now he is almost up to grade level in six short months. Most importantly he's very confident in his ability to read and he's feeling very hopeful and this is what I sincerely want you to experience as well. Mark loves science and Will your mom told me that you love science as well. This is an indication that you're a very bright young man. I'm not saying this simply because I can say it just to try and make you feel better but because there's some information I'm going to share with you about the brain that actually will back this up. But chances are if you're interested in the complex world of science that's an indication that your brain is really thirsty for information and a sign that your brain is very intelligent. Even though you're struggling in reading, you have a lot of intelligence. Here's how I know. And basically the answer lies in understanding what a learning disability is. In order to understand a learning disability, we need to understand the brain. The brain is made of many, many subsections. And this illustration only shows you a few of them. There's about two dozen on here, a little less than two dozen. But uh, if you Google different parts of the brain, you'll find images that show you all different sorts of things. Um, each of these sections really could be divided up into smaller subsections as well. What I want to point out to you is that the section of the brain that is responsible for reading is in the, towards the center, towards the lower center of this picture of the brain, the small light gray area. I want you to take note that that section of the brain is one small section of a much larger brain. And what this means is the struggles you have with reading are limited to that one area.
and in fact that area of the brain that is responsible for reading really could be divided into uh, smaller subsections. My guess is the challenges you're experiencing are limited to one or two of those smaller sections. Now everyone is born with a deficiency in some area of their brain because we are all stronger in, in some areas than we are in others. The reason why you feel like your, your challenges might be more significant than others is because reading is so central to everything we do in school. But everyone in your class has stronger areas in the brain and weaker areas of the brain. Your weaker area just happens to be in an area that stands out more. Now, in order for each of these sections of the brain to work, they have to be able to communicate with one another because the area that's responsible for vision is not just going to keep that information about what the brain sees limited to that small section. It has to share that information with all the other different parts of the brain in order to effectively see things, effectively read things, effectively be able to avoid walls as you're approaching a wall and know that you're not supposed to walk into it and all those things that the brain does for us. So. In order for these sections of the brain to communicate with one another, the brain relies on neuron connections. This image here is a magnified image of neuron connections. These are very, very small and there are billions of them in your brain. In fact, it's really beyond our ability to comprehend just how complex these connections are. But these are the, basically this is an electrical system. This is a pile of wires within your brain that helps your brain communicate with all these different sections and helps all these sections communicate with one another and connect together. This is very significant because in the last 10 years researchers have begun to understand that the brain is constantly growing new neuron connections. The brain is not static. It's not that you reach a certain age and then it suddenly stops growing. As long as the brain is exercised and the brain is learning new things, then new neuron connections will forge. And in fact, that is how you grow your brain is by actively learning new things. Every time you learn something new, you have a few hundred neuron connections that form in the brain at minimum. Now, because we know that the brain can change, and this is different than what a lot of your teachers likely learned in school. In fact, when I went to school, it was believed that your brain was growing up through about age five, and then after that, it pretty much stayed the same, that it, there was a limited opportunity for the brain to grow beyond that, particularly when we're talking about reading skills. We know now that that's not true at all. It might become a little more difficult for the brain to forge neuron connections, but not impossible by any stretch. Now this information is really significant because it allows you to build detours around the weaker areas of the brain to overcome your learning disability. Many of the reading programs that are designed for students who struggle with reading will focus on what they call multi-sensory education or multi-sensory instruction. That means that they take greater advantage of your ability to touch things, to move things around, to hear sounds, and to blend all of your different senses together. Those, of course, I'm going to step back here, um, are capitalize on different areas of the brain because the area that's responsible for vision is in one area and uh, somewhere around here, I'm sure, the, there's a section of the brain that manages the sensory input from touching and moving and things like that. So when you capitalize on these stronger areas of the brain, you can literally build a detour right around that section of the brain that's weak. And also, as that detour is being built, then it provides a very nice network and a support system for the weaker area to grow more and more neuron connections. And over time, it is actually possible to outgrow a learning disability through practice and through that more, more or less brain muscle development. The way the neuron connections grow in that weaker section of the brain is very much like your muscles grow when you go to the gym. You know, there's different, uh, different exercises you do at the gym to build different muscles, and the same thing is true with a learning disability. When someone knows what areas of the brain to capitalize on to help you build around the weaker area, then that allows your body, excuse me, your brain over time to, um, to build stronger neuron connections. And again, you could very well overcome this learning disability altogether as you uh, grow and continue through school. 
Well, I hope you found this information helpful, and I hope that you'll visit our website and possibly click on that uh, Contact Us button at the top and let me know what you think of this information. For anyone else who's watching this video, I encourage you to do the same as well. I hope this information is insightful for you and gives you another uh, way to think about learning disabilities and hopefully a very optimistic way to think about learning disabilities. We also have lots more information on our website so I encourage you to check our resources every week at the very least we're adding new content and oftentimes two or three times a week. These lower sections on the bottom will help you find information that's most relevant for you so parents you can click on the parents button to find articles that are specifically related to topics of your concern. Students you can click on the students button and teachers, you can click on that red button or you can go directly to this uh, form right here on our home page and receive our free teacher toolkit that gives you some information about introducing study skills to your students. But no matter what, I hope you're able to make good use of this information and I would love to hear your success stories. Good luck and take care.